Hello and welcome to another edition of Express Yourself. I'm the Sonia Johnson, your co-host. And I'm your host, Vernon Richardson. Vernon, it feels great to be back in the studio. I, I really missed it. Well, you know, it's been a long time, but we're back. And I tell you, we got a host of brand new shows right. coming your way with positive guests, innovative ideas coming your way. So stay tuned. Speaking of innovative ideas, uh, tonight we have a very special guest. Uh, our show is going to focus on how effective is rehabilitation in our prison system. Oh. Vernon, do you feel that the educational programs is the answer? Yes. I mean, nowadays, uh, our inmates, once they're released from the system, it seems like they're back in in just a short period of time, as though there was a revolving door or something. Well, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, there's so many people, so many people around that is living proof, and we have someone here coming up to share with them the living proof of success with the proper education program can be rehabilitated. Speaking of proper educational programs, that brings to mind Charles Dutton. Hell oh, Grants afforded yeah. him the opportunity to receive an associate's and art degree in Hagerstown, Maryland, and an institution in Hagerstown, Maryland. And today, well, he's the star of his own show, Rock. Rock. Yes. We all know who that is. Yes, but speaking of issues, you know, inmates receiving money for education has been a long point of a political debate. Some argue that it takes away from law-abiding citizens who are trying to find more money for themselves to go to college. So others argue and say, well, it's a proven method, rehabilitation, it works. Tonight's guest is a very special guest. He Indeed. himself has been a part of the prison system. He has taken the opportunity to achieve an education while being incarcerated. And um, that's going to be very interesting. Interesting and remarkable indeed. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Vernon and more of Express Yourself. Listen up. You think if you get a girl pregnant, it's her problem, right? Wrong. For you, it's all over. All she wrote. Even if a brother doesn't come looking for you, you think I'm going to let you play like nothing happened? You'll be lucky to finish high school. Never mind college. Start thinking with your head. You may be old enough to do it. You aren't old enough to handle it. Talk to your kids about sex. If you need help, call this number. Hello and welcome back to Express Yourself. My guest tonight, a very strong, sincere, positive young man that has a whole lot of hope within himself. It was a nightmare for Terrence Johnson, handcuffed, unable to call his parents while detained by the police officers, six officers at a very difficult time. He was introduced into manhood, being choked, punched, kicked in the growing, all the above, Terrence Johnson, a man, a young, young boy at the time, had no choice but to attack and take the proper cause to defend himself. <sighs> Killed two PG County police officers. Suddenly transformed him from a 98 pound frightened boy to a man charged with two counts of murder. At last, embraced by the community, transformed by education, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for your support for the years Terrence Johnson has been incarcerated. He's here with us tonight, and I'd like to welcome him. Terrence. Thank you, Ron. Hello and welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. To express yourself. Thank you for having me. It's Terrence, a pleasure to be here. <clears throat> you, you know, uh, there's a lot of people right now saying that you didn't really serve the time that you were supposed to serve. Is there any message that you would like to say to those people that feel that you should still be incarcerated? <laughs> Well, luckily, uh, I have God on my side first. That's and, a big uh, plus. Transformed first by God, and uh, <clears throat> uh, used uh, a lot of 
what you know God allowed me first to do is through education. Uh, those who who like to say he belongs in prison, uh, they live in a prison themselves because all they want to see is people who live in a miserable existence. True. So they live within their own prison. So I can't be concerned about those who do not want to be helped, who do not like to see other people help themselves, help other people. So I feel sorry for him, and I can only say let's pray for him. Indeed. Well, there's other aspects that people are saying that Terrence Johnson, you know, incarcerated in prison for 16 years. Here he is today, strong, positive, sincere, with a beautiful personality. How did you maintain that self-esteem? What's your secret? <laughs> well, it's really no secret, Vernon. Uh, I, I think everybody knows. Uh, anytime they see me, even if they don't believe in God, when they see me, they have to believe in God because this is the only way that I could uh, ever come through a very <clears throat> horrifying and, and tragic situation. It's a strong faith in God and the overwhelming community support that existed throughout those 17 years. Yes, yes. Overwhelming. I'm not talking about maybe one or two or just family members. We're talking about total strangers from every, all over, all over every, the world. Yeah. Every walk of, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, every you know possible existence in life, these people were there supporting, saying they believe and uh, they just hope that I get through this. Well, I understand that you know a lot of people think it was a, a racial issue. Um, in in a perspective, yes, but in the support, no. Because Absolutely. you receive so much support from different races, it was amazing, and I, I'm quite sure that that had made you, you know, feel very good inside to have not just the black people supporting right. you, but all people of all races. Well, see that the, you know, the terrible thing about this is that people, uh, well, not people, but the Prince George County <clears throat> Police Department, uh, some of the members who represent, who supposedly represent the, the union. Yes. Uh, Supposedly. They created this yes. monster, not Terrence Johnson. Mm -hmm. I didn't create the Prince George's County Police Force. They created it. In fact, they created it by perpetuating irresponsibility. When they see other road cops engaging in uh, irresponsible and criminal behavior, respons their responsibility is to report these people, not Terrence Johnson. That's right. Uh, I was being beaten. There were people in that police station that could have intervened and stopped that sure. beating. They sure didn't. They mm -hmm. So I, can't, I can only be responsible to a certain extent. And uh, it's very tragic that it happened. It's very unfortunate. But I can only take responsibility, uh, you know, to a certain extent. Well, I think being in the position that you were, you had no choice but to take that particular, that action. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was no conscious effort on my part. It was instinctive. And instinctive because it's the, it's the first law of nature, and that's self-preservation. You don't teach people that. You, you were born with an with instinct that, that's right. to survive. You can put a man in any wilderness and he'll survive. Now, this is exactly what happened to me. I mean, when I went to prison yes. as a young boy, young. put me in the wilderness, and what do you think? I mean, I'm either going to just, you know, surrender the will to survive, or I'm going to, challenge it. you know, yeah. that's right. I'm going to rise to the challenge. And I think that through the grace of God, through prayer, and good friends and family, I chose to rise to the occasion. And truly you have already you. to the occasion. You know, there's a lot of other people that are saying, well, um, what happened? What caused that event to take place? You know, you have a lot of people, well, we were on the inside, okay? There are people on the outside looking in. But you, you're the only one that really knows what would happen and why it happened. And the whole thing, the whole perspective is that people are saying, what provoked you? And I know you get tired of hearing that over and over and over again. What's your remark to what's that? Well, uh, I know what happened in that room. And uh, there's, you know, the, the officer Claggett, he knows what happened. Mm -hmm. I, from what I understand, we were the only two in the room. And uh, outside of that <coughs> room, all those officers know what happened. They know what precipitated before. And even greater beating mm -hmm. once I went into the room. Uh, so, uh, but in a lot of people's minds, they didn't need to know what happened to hear it from me. They knew already what happened. You know, a lot of people that were saying, uh, they weren't saying 
he had to do something, meaning me, Terrence right. had to do something. Right. They were saying those policemen had to do something to that boy. For him to do that. That's right. And they knew that. Right. But uh, when the trial began to take place and people began to hear more and more about Terrence, they yes. became even more convinced. And we started seeing people from all levels of society, uh, you know, coming out to support uh, my acquittal. The most notorious trial in the history of Merlin that day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Incredible. Because it put a racist, one of the, one of the most yeah. notorious police departments in the country on trial. It did. And although we were unsuccessful in bringing out a lot of brutality cases during the trial, which would have probably resulted in my uh, favor, in my you sure. know total acquittal, mm -hmm. uh, we were able to at least uh, bring out some of the positive Highlands. qualities about me sure. as an individual prior to this incident. Now I understand that um, your family uh, once at one particular time was a part your your mom and dad, but. That this incident had brought them together, and could you tell us a little bit about that support from the mother and father? Well, that's very important because I'm glad Indeed. you brought that out. And uh, uh, my mother at the time was was a very very spiritual person. She still is today. Sure. She was struggling. You know, she lived off welfare for many years to support uh, three boys. Uh, the my older sister and my next to the oldest brother was living with my father. Okay. So she struggled. Through a, you know, through a very difficult sure. time. Mm -hmm. My father was an alcoholic. He's a recovering alcoholic now. Very proud of him. He's very proud of himself. Sure. He's been a recovering alcoholic now for over 16 years. And, uh, you know, for each one of our family members, this experience has transformed each one of us into different individuals. Now, unfortunately, it didn't happen that way for my oldest brother, Melvin. Uh, but now I think that uh, with the help of Montel Williams, which yes. I'm very grateful to him for, uh, he's in a treatment program in Pennsylvania. Beautiful. And he's doing excellent. So Beautiful. Uh, hopefully he's well on his way to recovery. Now I understand that your brother condition has to do with, by you being uh, detained for these, those many years, yeah. led him into this astray. That's right. And um, I know that it could be very difficult and very hard for the family. But, you know, there is a God. That's right. That's hey. right, Vern. There is a God. And uh, that's a, I mean, that's a tremendous that's burden. That's the bottom line. That is a tremendous yes. burden for anybody to live with, to know or to witness a family member that you love so dearly being beaten, you know, to death. And there's nothing at all that you can do. And then you also, sh uh, you know, carry that burden. burden. That you put that, yes. that you feel some sense of responsibility sure. that you put that person in that position to begin with. So, I mean, I really, really, I tell you, I grieve for my brother and his anguish and his sure. pain because I know, I know what he must be going through, but it's not, it's not his burden to share alone. That's correct. You know, there's a lot of other people out here that can tell you and I, I probably share with you the burdens of, that they've had, the confrontations that they had with the police officers here in Prince George's County. We have some great police officers. Absolutely. I mean, we have some outstanding police officers that are doing their job. But as you know, we have a few that think that they're above the law. That's right. So my question is that when are we going to come together, take a stand, and make a point to make and address the positive issues that somewhere along the line this has to stop? Well, I'll tell you right now, the biggest burden right now that the county, the county executive, Wayne Curry, must, must share in all of this, he's, a lot of people is counting on him to transform that department. And, he's, and I tell you, right now, he needs to make a genuine effort to put an Afri African American in the police chief's okay. position. He, need, he needs to make an effort there to instill the faith and confidence within the black community that the Prince George's County Police Department is something that we can all look up to and admire and respect. You're right. You're absolutely right. We're going to take a break. It's time to take a pause for this cause. Hold your thoughts, Terrence. I will. We'll be right back after this message. If you get pregnant, this is what the rest of your teenage years are going to sound like. 
You can go farther when you don't go all the way. If you need help, call this number. Hello and welcome back. My guest tonight, Terrence Johnson. Terrence, as we sat here and shared some past tense, uh, I think I want to highlight just a little bit more about an incident that I've become involved in and I can share the pain and the understanding that what you went through is nowhere near what I went through, but it happened to me too. As a law enforcement officer, hmm. assaulted, battered, by PG County police officers, four white male police officers, one black police officer. Took me three years, man. Three years, took me three years of anticipation of what the outcome would be. Living on, every time I go outside, every time I take a drive, maintaining that security or that hope that I wouldn't get stopped mm -hmm. for any reason at all. Okay, mm -hmm. left alone. It's, it's, it's a feeling that has been something that it's very hard for me to express because a lot of people don't think or, or see that, what did I do? Hmm. What did they do? That's right. That's the question. Why can't it be on the opposite side of what they did to me? I had to, did I provoke it? Did I raise my hand or did I, all the above, nothing. As That's a right. law enforcement officer, I was totally disrespected. That's right. At that particular time. Kicked, hit, punched, and had two witnesses. But. This is just to say that, Terrence, it's still going on. That's right. It's still going on. Back in 1985, man, and I still carry that with me. And when that incident happened with Rodney King, that I relived that That's for right. three years, man. That's right. And it hurts. And I just want to say something to my Express Yourself viewers, that when you are in a position and in a situation and, and it happens to you and no one really wants to listen or, or everybody wants to be, well, you must have done something to motivate them to do the negative. As they say, the first thing they say, resist, resisting arrest. Hmm. So, enough said on that. I just wanted to let you know I too have been there. But I did not let it get me down. It That's ruined right. my police career. That's right. But I'm still a positive, sincere person doing things in the community. Let's talk about your education. Man, you should be commended, highly commended, for taking that time and using it and providing a very self-esteem for yourself. Tell us, I know it kept you going day by day, but is there anything that you would like to share with people right now that are incarcerated? I'm sharing your pain as you, as you recount some of your, you know, unfortunate experiences with them. Uh, but unfortunately, I mean, it's a very humiliating experience. It is. And a lot of people don't realize it's a very, very humiliating experience to have someone physically beat you. For no reason like you're, at Like all. a trash, yeah. like your garbage, you know? So I'm sharing your pain as you recount that. Uh, when you mention the word incarcerated, you know, I, I think of people, when we typically think of people in prison, yes. behind bars, yes. but incarcerated is, is really all about being a state of mind. Okay. And so many of uh, our younger black uh, kids are trapped in a Indeed. state of mind of That's despair right. and hopelessness, uh, joblessness, you know, drug addiction, alcohol, you know, and uh, how can I inspire them? I think the only way I can possibly inspire anybody is to live by example. You know, and I, that's why I'm so grateful to you for having me on your program. I think the more they get a chance to hear how I overcame some very adverse and troublesome yes. experiences, then hopefully they'll, they'll begin to, you know, the message will begin to ring sure. true. 
that, you know, yeah, they maybe can. I maybe I should go back yes. to high school and get my GED. Sure. Or maybe I should go to junior college, you know, because education is the key. Is the key. It opens a lot of doors. That's right. And when we're talking about opening doors, we're not talking about being in the Fortune 500 companies. That's not really what success is <laughs> right. truly all That's about. True. It's a state of mind, as state far as I'm mind. concerned. Yeah, it helps to pay the bills if you can if you can command a six, seven figure salary. But I tell you, first of all, you have to get your state of mind in order. And that was one of the things that I was fortunate enough to do. That while in prison, even among all those negative influences, I was determined. Determined. that I was going to come out of this awful experience with something to show for it. And through the grace of God, I tell you, uh, I spent six years totally devoted to getting my you know, bachelor's degree, sure. uh, accumulating a lot of vocational trades. And unfortunately, you know, the system just didn't provide enough opportunities where I could continue. <laughs> continue. You know, I, mean, I mean, they began to beat me down when I was, you know, <laughs> He was like, on a roll, down. man. It That's was right. like, uh, Terrence, what you going to do next? That's right. Give That's it right. to me. You I know. would have came out of there with a master's or <laughs> PhD if I was in the position to do it. Awesome. Uh, but they, they, don't, they don't encourage that kind of stuff. I mean, they seem to feel threatened yeah. that, that we would even, you know, suggest that we get that sort of education. Well, you know, federal government right now is trying to put a stop on that Pell Grant. You know, they're trying to abolish that. I know it's something behind that, <laughs> and I know it's something that... that well, I, I don't want to say the bad <laughs> word behind it, but you, I think we all know yes, what's yes. behind that. I mean, You turned from your associate's, um, from your bachelor's degree, from business, but now you're studying law. What made you look, strive That's into right. that area? Well, as always, man, I tell you, uh, God works in mysterious ways. I was blessed with an individual in my life right now uh, by the name of uh, the assistant dean of uh, admissions at Howard University, Ted Miller, okay. who, who became aware of my story in 1978, followed me, sure. and uh, became so inspired with the fact that he found out about my grades and everything, and he actively recruited me. Wonderful. You know, a Wonderful. prisoner. You know, out of prison, <laughs> he recruited me for law school. So Gosh. all I have to do now is to perform. You know, do I deserve to be in the Howard? So I haven't been admitted yet. But, but you will. I have to prove that I oh, belong yeah. in Howard. You'll and, be there. Uh, you know, I, I think I belong in Howard more than I belong in prison. So oh, absolutely. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove <laughs> to him that, that I belong there, and I'm going to work hard at it. Well, you know, I think a lot of people are going to be supporting you wherever you go, Terrence, because... You're truly remarkable, man. You're like, oh, you. you know, sunshine coming out of the prison, man. <laughs> you know, just imagine if we had another thousand like you to come out and do the right thing. That's right. Instead of sitting there sagging about what happened yesterday That's or right. last week. That's right. Put that energy to work, such as you, man. That's right. Use it, use it to, to motivate you like I did. You know, all those people that think about, well, let's see him fail. And let's put obstacles in his way. Let that be your motivation. Motivation, you know? that's right. Because uh, as hard as they work to keep you down, you have to work twice as hard, you know, to excel. Okay. Now, I know it was a lot of people that helped you along the way. Is there any people in particular, one, two, three people in particular that I know that you really want to uh, address or say thank you um, I, well, among well, the host of right. the co community. That's right. that's right. I mean, it wouldn't be fair. To, yeah. To, but I, I have to, you know, I have to first of all say that uh, my father, you know, who sure. deserves so much credit, he transformed his life to help me, okay. to inspire me, yes. to lead by example. And uh, it started with him. Starts from home. That's it? right. That's right. And, it doesn't uh, matter where you are. That's exactly right. And uh, he was going through some bad experiences, and he gave it up and said, look, I, my son needs me. And, uh, of course, uh, there are many other supporters out there, but sure. uh, Charles Ware and what he has done as far as opening his business, his, his friendships, home his home, oh, uh, you know, you name it. Charles has been there for me. And, uh, of course, I'd like to thank uh, Kenneth Mundy, who recently passed. And, uh, you know, I mean, I know he hears me. He, he, men like him go to heaven. There's no question yes. about it. Yes. And that's where, he, you know, that's where he'll be. And I know he knows how grateful I am to him. He's and been with you from the start. That's, that's right. And he represented me during the trial. Remarkable. And I'm telling you, he took so much abuse and he, he took I so many it. death threats. And, but Ken Mundy came in there every day with a smile and just a glowing personality. And he was ready. 
And, uh, Ready for action. You know, I, I tell you, it was just, man, it was so difficult to deal with the fact that he passed the way he, he did. But we're well, all going to miss him. Well, you know, Terrence, uh, there's not enough time. And I wish I had an hour. <laughs> but uh, I would like to uh, extend this this invitation to uh, have you come back sure. later in the future sure. to sure. go a full hour because there's That's so right. much we didn't cover. But at the same time, I want you to share with us any last comments? Chief, Vernon, the, uh, what I want to share is that I want to thank so many of those people out there in the community, uh, especially those who, who felt that because of their career choices, because of their positions, because of their affiliations, that they couldn't openly support. I know you were there, and I appreciate that, and God bless you. And I want to, you know, I want to say a special uh, thank you and, uh, to, to all the uh, people who represented me at McDermott, Will, and Embry, and, of course, Judge Duckett who withstood many death threats and uh, a lot of racist pressure well, within his own profession. I want to thank this judge because I think uh, he made the difference in the, in, the fin in, in the final end. Absolutely. Well, Terrence, I do thank you. Just don't go away. We will return right after this message. give me that look. You think you invented sex? Listen, my sister got pregnant when she was 17. She quit school. She lost her friends. She was alone. You think that boy you're seeing is ready to be a father? Wait, honey. Please wait. Nobody's saying sex is bad, but to a 13-year-old, it'll kill your dreams. Talk to your kids about sex. If you need help, call this number. Hello and welcome back to Express Yourself. There you have it, a man of the time of this time, the 1990s. But Sonia, what do you think about this remarkable young man? In one word, he's incredible. Uh, Terrence demonstrated professionalism. He demonstrated that he had education. I mean, he's just a spiritual, wonderful man. You know, we can use a lot more of Terrence Johnson's if they take the time and get involved in the educational programs that the Pell Grants provide for absolutely, them. Absolutely, absolutely. I like to take this time to say to all of our Express Yourself viewers, especially those that are watching that may be incarcerated, there is a shortage of men out here. We need men on the street. Use Terrence Johnson as a role model. We want you out here. <laughs> I would back you up on it, but uh, I'm gonna let that. I'm gonna care. leave that alone. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone. But I do okay. want to say this: um, we have a lot to be thankful for because mm -hmm. PG County is a great city, is a great place to live in. Okay, and we're out of here. Until next time, peace. Mm -hmm.